Today's video can be found on page seven. It is a problem of the day. In fact, it's three problems of the day. This is a little review of writing equations of lines in the y equals mx plus b form. So these three problems are for you to do on your own, and uh, we'll go over those in class tomorrow. So on to page eight, systems of linear equations. Well, we saw how to do them on a graphing calculator and to solve them graphically. We're also going to do graphically again today. This is 5.4 in your text, how to solve them graphically, um, systems of linear equations. A system of linear equations is two or more linear equations with same variables. So, for instance, 2x plus y equals 8 and x minus 3y equals negative 9, yes, both equations contain the variables x and y that is con considered to be a system of linear equations. In the second example here, x plus 8y equals 12, and 6a plus b equals negative 3, no, 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 no. Both equations have different variables, not a system of equations. A solution for a system of equations is any ordered pair of numbers that satisfies all the equations in the system. If there are two, it has to work in both equations. If there are three, it has to work in three equations. If there are four equations, it would have to work in all four, etc., etc. There are three types of solutions to a system of linear equations. We've seen this before, that an equation can have one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution. Same thing happens with a system of linear equations, or three ways that two lines can form graphically. So in this example here, this is one solution. They cross at one point. That's called consistent, like we've had in the past. Consistent equations have one solution. Or they could end up being the exact same line, only they're multiples of each other. So x minus 2y equals 4 is exactly the same equation. They don't look the same, but they are equivalent to 2x minus 4y equals 8. If you take this first equation and you multiply it by 2, you will get that second version of the exact same equation. So they will have an identity, which means they will have infinitely many solutions. The identity, an infinite number of solutions infinite solutions. They're the same line. They graph on top of each other. Or the third one, which is inconsistent, that's parallel lines, as you can see in this picture here. Parallel lines will never cross. They will not have one solution that works for both of them. So there are no solutions, what's called inconsistent. Same as we had with an equation. Find the solution for each system. Number one, y equals x plus 1, y equals x plus 1, and 3x minus 7. Oh, they cross right here. Got to the point, their solution is 4, 5, where they intersect. So they do have a solution. x plus y equals negative 3. And y equals 3x minus 7. Oh, they also cross. So they are consistent. They have one solution at 1, negative 4. Write the coordinates of each point. Number 3, a point that will satisfy y equals x plus 1, but not y equals 3x minus 7. So it has to lie on the line y equals x plus 1, and there's infinitely many, except for that one point, 4 or 5. Don't pick that one. So uh, I'm going to pick this point, 1, 2. 
It lies on the line. It's a solution for y equals x plus 1, but is not a solution to y equals 3x minus 7. Number 4, a point that satisfies y equals 3x minus 7, but not x plus y equals negative 3. I'm going to pick this nice, easy-to-read point here. So it lies on the graph of 3x minus 7, and that's the point 2, negative 1. But it is not on the graph of x plus y equals negative 3. Because, yes, 2 and negative 1 does not equal negative 3. So, yes, there are infinitely many, except for that 1 point, 1, negative 4, which the two graphs had in common. On to page 9. Think and discuss. All the examples had integer solutions. When do you think graphing might not be useful for solving a system of equations? A system of two linear equations and two variables has no solution. Describe the line graphs of the equations. Well, we saw that. They are parallel. All the examples had integer solutions. When do you think graphing might not be useful for solving a system of equations? Oh, when you have non-integer solutions. So non-integers. When you have rational solutions. Like trying to graph the point 3 sevenths, uh, negative 6 fifths. Woof! That would be hard to read on graph paper. We want things to cross nicely on the graph paper. And then number three, two distinct ordered pairs are solutions of a system of two linear equations. Describe the graphs of these equations. Well, they must be the same line. If it has two points, it's also going to have infinitely many points. So number five says, tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the system. So does 3, negative 1 work in both equations? Okay, so 3 times 3 minus 2 times negative 1. So I'm just plugging in the value 3 and negative 1 where x and y are. Does that equal 8? So that's 9 plus 2. Oop, that's 11. 11 does not equal 8. So it does not work in this equation. So it didn't work there. So no, not a solution. Might work in the second equation. 3 times, does 3 equal negative 3 times negative 1? Yes, it does. It does work in that one, but doesn't work in the first equation. x minus 2y equals 0. x minus 2y equals 0. So 2 minus 2 times 1. 2 minus 2 does equal 0. Okay, that works. And 2 times 2 plus 1. So that's 4 plus 5. 4 plus 1 equals 5. Oops, 5 does not equal 4. So it didn't work here, so it is not a solution to the system. Okay, number 7, let's see if you work. Uh, 1, 1. So 1 plus 2 times 1. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3, yeah. And 1 equals 2 times 1 minus 1. Yes, it does. So yes. 1, 1 works in both equations. It is the solution to that system of equations. Number 8, solve each system by graphing. Check your solutions. Oh, and they've given us graph paper here. So I'm going to just stick with the graph paper. I'm going to solve these for y equals. So the first one would be y equals, because if you move 2x over, right, you get negative y equals negative 2x plus 4. We never solve for negative y, so dividing by negative 1, each term I get y equals 2x minus 4. That's my top equation, so m equals 2, b equals negative 4. And my next equation, y equals 2x, m equals 2, 2 over 1, and b, oh, y equals negative 2x. Woo, negative 2x. So m is negative 2 and b is 0. So with that in mind, so 
B is negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I don't know how this is going to show up on here. Let's see. And up 2 and over 1. And up 1, 2, and over 1. So there's my first equation. And using my little arrow tool, my line tool, And I'm going up 2 and over 1, and up 2 and over 1, and up 2 and over 1, and making sure that my line is lining up with up 2 and over 1. So I'm, spot, I'm spotting out and looking. Did it go up 2 and over 1? Yes. Up 2 and over 1? Yes. Up 2 and over 1? Yes. Up 2 and over 1? So I can see that it's definitely going to hit these other points as well. Before I, you know, make a mistake graphing my line, I don't want it to be off a little bit. So I want to spot out, you know, because I want it to take up the majority of my graph paper. So y equals, whoop, 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 that wasn't the original equation. 2x minus y equals 2x minus y equals 4. That's the original equation. That's what we want to write on there. And y equals negative 2x. So my y-intercept was 0 down to an oh, over 1. i got to use a different color for this one. Down to an over 1. Down to an over 1. Down to an over 1. I can see that it's going to keep going in that direction. So using my, and you should be using a very nice straight edge. Oop, that's off. Don't want that line. And up to an over one, up to an over one. So this is the equation y equals negative 2x. And it's nice, negative. It is going in a negative direction there. We should label our graphs x and y. So there's uh, number eight done. Number nine. First equation is 3y minus 2x. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides and divide by 3, and I get y equals 2 thirds x, 6 divided by 3, plus 2. So my m is 2 thirds, my b is 2. And the other graph is y equals x plus 1, so my m y equals x plus 1, so my m equals 1 and my b equals 1. So pretty easy to graph those. So b is 2, and up 2 and over 1, 2, 3. Up 2 and over 1, 2, 3. Up 2 and over 1, 2, 3. I'm just trying to get a few points on there so that I'm lining up my ruler, my straight edge, or my tool here, my line tool, to make sure that my line is actually going through the points that are up to and over 3. Up to and over 3, up to and over 3. So this line I'll uh, label as y equals, well, that's not the original equation. The original equation was 3y minus 2x equals 6. 3y minus 2x equals 6. Now my other m is 1 and b is 1, so b is 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. Oh, I didn't figure out what was the solution of this last one. I did graph it, though. It is right here at 1, negative 2. I didn't state that. The solution is 1, negative 2. Now that I see my graphs are going to intersect here, being very careful with your straight edge that you're graphing the line appropriately so that it's going up into every corner of the next box. And the equation is y equals x plus 1. And it looks like they cross at the point 3, Four here. So yes, this is their solution. You put a big S on the graph. And then the ordered pair, their solution equals 
3 comma 4. Their solution was 1 negative 2. And that's it for today.